Hi Stampin' Friends! Tonight we're going to use the Honey Bee Home and Blessings of Home stamp sets um, and dies. Um, this is the one that has the thank you and um, some little bouquet and then a big profusion of blooms. Um, it has have a perfect birthday. You are a real blessing to everyone around you. We can get through anything together and what a beautiful day for love. And then the Honey Bee Home has a, a nice little um, little cylinder flower. And then this little flower, um, when it says, Such happy news. So glad we're family. Miss you. Best of luck. Stay wonderful. And you're the nicest. First, I wanted to just show you this card that is from um, the local class that I did last night. And it is an accordion Z fold. So what that means is it just makes a Z and then it has an accordion attached to it. Uh, this uses one of the papers that I um, showed last Monday, and then it has several of the stamps from the Honey Bee Home set on it. Getting started, I wanted to start with the Honey Bee Home, and um, I wanted to show a couple of different ways that I used it. Um, this is going to take me a second to, to get it shown to you. The first thing I did was kind of think that I wanted to have little vellum almost covers over the, the little cutie pie um, bees that are on here. But then I decided that was kind of too much. So then the next thing I decided was that it would be really cool if I leaves the wings off and just attach them with whatever... Um, like a, a blue dot or whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to try to show you what I had planned for it also, which was to take the doily and run it through the um, embossing folder with the honeycomb inside it. So then I was thinking, I'm not sure I like the honeycomb on this edge. And it might be okay, but I was trying to decide if I liked it better just with the inside. So let's get the other, um, an unused one of these. So here is a doily. And then if I just put this on here, I was thinking that could be kind of pretty. But I can, now I think it's kind of a little bit small. It was hard to get the size that I needed um, for the inside of this. So maybe I'll just go ahead with this one. Either way would work. But um, what I wanted to kind of do was imagine where I would place it on here. Um, I was imagining putting the You're the Nicest sentiment, which I stamped in the, um, gosh, cinnamon cider. But I wanted to only use kind of half of this. So my plan was to just kind of line it up. I kind of want my... Um, well, you can't see them. There we go. Um, I kind of wanted these um, to, to look like they're in the hive. So I was thinking I would cut part of it off and just put it at the bottom. So, let's see here. All right, well, I don't see my little cutter, which is totally fine because I'm going to put something over this bottom anyway, so it's not going to show. So I'm going to just go ahead and set it down here and make plans, so I don't want to stick anyone under there, to put it right here. Now one thing I didn't realize when I was using this paper before is that the light color is the pale papaya, but it doesn't look as peachy when you use it with, in my opinion, with the cinnamon sauce. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of stick some of this down and make several different kinds of plans for it. All right, I'm just gonna stick that about right there and then add the you're the nicest. To get that little corner off there. Like that. Okay, like that. And then I know I'm going to want to add some of our pale papaya ribbon, but I'm not really sure where I'm going to want to add it. I kind of feel like I might like to put, um, to put it on here kind of like a little 
a little snippet under here, but I think I'll wait until I get completely finished to make my decision with all my little wings. Okay, so now I'm left with just a few wings that I need to add on. So I think I'm gonna add this batch. Take that little edge off. And I could use this, but I think that's kind of a small space to try to put it in. So I'm going to get a glue dot and probably it's best to kind of pull it in half. Okay, there we go. Just kind of pop it on there. And then I need to find the rest of my guys. I've already cut a couple of them. So I want to be sure that I use the ones that I've cut. Cut that one. There we go. Then this one. Get another blue dot. It in half. Oops, must have been on this one. And I'm not sticking down the wings exactly, I'm just sticking it to what would be the body. And this one I'm just gonna go ahead and put my partial dot on there. And then this one I'm gonna cut across. Okay, so I've got that one for here. And then this one across here. a little violent that I'm cutting their heads off, but there's not really anything there, so I think it'll be fine. There we go. And then it looks like I need one more of the big one. I hope you all had a great week, or are having, whichever, depending on when you watch, I guess. There we go. All right, so I got that one put on. I don't think I had, no, I didn't have one under that. Right. I need one under here. Now the only problem is I didn't end up with an odd number. So I ended up with six. But I think this would be the perfect opportunity. What I was thinking, I was probably cut one and put it right on here. Um, maybe out of, yes, off with your head exactly, Shauna. It's like, oopsies. Um, put it right here as kind of the, um, the, almost the focal point of this. So let me go ahead and... These scissors may not be my friend. Let's find a better pair. When they get something gummy on them, I have to clean them with Goo Gone. So. Let's see. So I'm thinking I'm gonna put that kind of right on there like that, and then probably put my B right on top of it. And that made a really simple and fast card, but I think it's very different than what I normally come up with. It's different and it's kind of fun and I think enjoyable. So let me lift it up there where you can see just a little bit better. Here we are, fun, fun. So that is that idea. I'm gonna go ahead and stick this down to each other just so that I don't lose this. Just a little bit of sticky stuff. There we go. Okay. So that's that guy, just do that real quick. Again, so I don't lose anything that I'm working on. There we go. Then next I wanted to kind of show you this card that I was considering. Now this uses the, I mean, they're almost like Snapdragons. And I stamped with the Smoky Slate and added my color with Wink of Stella. And this is one that is really simple to do. And then with the matching paper, I really liked how that looked. One thing I wanted to show you here, what this is, this is the back side of these 
um, doilies that are cinnamon cider. And they, they come in cinnamon cider, the moonlight, uh, Missy Moonlight, and the Smoky Slate, but all the back sides are white. I chose to use this one because I liked how if it if it lifts up a little bit or if I put it on uh, dimensionals, it will still sort of, the reflection or the shadow under here is still a matching kind of color. So there's that. And I chose the You're the Nicest again, and I put the shimmery Wink of Stella on it. So what I wanted to do now was just kind of show you how I stamped and colored that. So here is my ink, my Smoky Slate ink, and this guy inked it up. I'm going to stamp it on here. And then, oh, I don't like that. Might have needed to get a little more ink on it. Good thing we have two sides to our paper. Okay, there we go. Well, no, maybe I don't like that either. Decisions, decisions. Let me try one more time. caught an edge but it won't matter because I'm going to cut it out so um, I'm going to use this one because it's nice and dark and then I have been putting my ink on here so I'm going to use the garden green which matches my paper and I'm going to use the pale papaya which also matches my paper there we go then I'm going to grab my wink of Stella and I'm going to start with my garden green because it is kind of the easier one. Um, all I'm doing here, and you know, I'm not a great painter, but all you have to do is just kind of run down the leaves and the stems. So now I've got the, the green on, so I'm going to just make sure I've got most of this off of here. Maybe I use one of this, this little, yeah, all the green is gone. Okay, so now I'm just going to, I'm kind of squeezing it just a wee bit. I think I'll put this under here. Just to get, oh yeah, that was a lot. Better throw that in the trash. Okay, so now I'm picking up, oh, I'm picking up a lot, hold on. There we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna start in the places where I would want the most color, which is down at the bottom, and inside the centers of the flowers. And then on this back. Okay, so I'm adding a lot of color, and then when it, when it starts to kind of even out, then I'm putting it on what I would consider the part that the light hits.
So there you can see how I colored it. It was very simple, very quick, and pretty easy. So at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and wrap my ribbon around. Let's see here, where did my scissors go? These will work. Maybe they will. All right, and wrap it around the bottom, as is typical. Um, this is one where it is perfect for wrapping ribbon around because you can line it up with the planks on the boards and you can be sure that you don't even have to look at the front. You can be sure that your ribbon is fairly straight just by looking at these on the back of this paper. And all of this paper is striped like that, depending on which way you cut it, whether you have, if you're with the grain, it's super easy to do that. And I'm just putting adhesive on the rest of the card. And adding it to the base. There we go. All right, all set with that. And then I'm going to pop this up on some dimensionals. Mainly to get, make it worthwhile that I use the cinnamon cider. I think if I glued it down, it probably wouldn't matter which color of doily that I used. Not sure how I got those stuff stuck to my fingertips like that. Does that happen to y'all? Like, what in the world? Okay, I'm trying to decide here. I'm gonna go ahead and place this here just to kind of imagine where I'm gonna set it. I think I'm gonna center it right in the middle. But I may put this guy over to the side. Yeah, I think I will. Okay, then I just need to find some, some of the small little dimensionals. And they are not hopping in my hand. Here we go. All right. Because I want to put these um, in a way that I can use them in several spots and not have to worry about any hangover. That's one thing I love about these mini dimensionals. You have to worry if there's a hole though. There we go. So I'm going to put this just kind of to the side right there. There you can see where we are right now. I'm going to go ahead and put some adhesive on this piece, on this sentiment layer, and tuck it right down there. And this is different for me. I don't usually not cover up the ribbon. I usually either put it on the ribbon or put it above the ribbon, but this time I'm going to go kind of halvesies and put it slightly on the ribbon there, but leaving the bottom edge of the ribbon showing, just to allow a little more space. And then I'm just gonna be crazy ribbon girl and put another bit of ribbon. I'm gonna put a little bow, and I do. Let me show you how I make my bows. I think it is the easiest and simplest way. I just make a loop front to back, spin it around, and slide it through just like tying your shoes and then I think where the cuteness comes in is that the longer you play with it the better it looks so that's just my opinion I think that um, that can make a pretty nice simple bow and it's quick just kind of my bow plan most of the time I'll occasionally make big fluffy bows where you make you know several loops but I do love these where they're just kind of simple and cute. Got this one just a wee bit long. Let's snip it one more time. Okay, then on this one I could put it either up here. Now I've got that one a little bit long. Oh, decisions, decisions. I could put it up here by my flower. I could put it down here with my sentiment. Do you guys have a preference? Anybody want to say what they think looks best? while I look for um, the other things I'm gonna add to this. Let's see here. I was considering, I think these look too pink, but I was considering these um, clear, there are the polished dots. I was considering using the clear ones. So I think that they look kind of like um, almost a rain shower on here. So let me put a few of these little polished dots on. There we go. I like to use at least three, and I kind of like to vary. Let's see if you can even see what I've done there. 
I kind of like to vary the size, put a, you know, just a little bit, but sometimes I get them, I don't get my triangle. You know, we always try to put these on in a triangle. Sometimes I don't get my triangle just like I want. I have to try again, so there we go. Oh, on the flower stem, yes, that would be gorgeous too. You are exactly right, Linda, that would be super pretty. So yeah, we have a lot of choices. I don't know that I've decided yet. I'm gonna have to wait, try to decide where to put it. Like there's so many choices, so many choices. Super cute. Well, it's going to be cute either way that I do it. So that is this card. And you could keep going with these um, with these little guys and add, you know, make put five. Just typically we always put them in um, odd numbers because that's supposed to look better. All right. Now we are on to the um, Blessings from Home. And I had two different ideas with this. And these have some coloring. So that was what I was kind of going for with them. Let's see here, where did I set them? There they are. Um, I couldn't decide which I wanted to do with this. Typically what people do when they are um, coloring like this, they'll, they will use, like I did with the Wink of Stella or with a, a water painter or a blender pen, and they'll use a really light edge and try to make it a no line water coloring. So that's one option. Or blends and since I have this navy that might actually turn out to look the best um the navy probably lends itself to this is this is stamped in memento black and um that probably would make it the sharpest kind of a color so the color I wanted to use with this was the light and dark soft succulent the balmy blue and then the navy <clears throat> on these little tiny flowers. And then I wanted to use yellow on my flowers themselves. Okay, so let's kind of get started and see what we think here. So I did the light balmy blue. And so what to me, these little guys look like forget-me-nots. It probably doesn't matter, but I am going to go for the light navy. There we go. And then when I, I'm going to let this dry a little bit, and then I am going to put some Wink of Stella in those flower centers. Okay, so now I'm going to take my soft succulent and color the leaves. This is the light soft succulent blends. So now I'm going to take the light so saffron oh, and knock things in the floor with it and just color my petals. And I'm just doing them, I kind of all of the edges. I'm going to go back through and add a little bit of the darker colors as I finish. And now I'm just going to put my dark so saffron in the center. Boy, it doesn't seem very dark, does it? There we go. Well, I've got it on there anyway. Okay. 
think I may get some. I've got, got my blends here. I think I'm going to get a little bit darker yellow. Oh, no, that's not my guy. Hmm. Okay, I think I'm going to put some pale papaya in this center because I would like it to contrast a little bit. Well, that's still not any darker. How about a dark pale papaya? There we go. It's kind of an oxymoron or whatever, dark pale. Dark pale. There we go. I like that. Finally, huh? Okay. So there you can see our little flower. And with this one, I was just kind of imagining it having a real pop against the navy. And then let's go ahead and try to decide on a sentiment. I was thinking Miss You was what I wanted to use for this. So I'm going to reach in here and get my Miss You. Just kind of imagine how I'm going to lay this out. I do think I want to use some of my soft succulent ribbon somewhere just to kind of add. If I can get a hold of it. There we go. I think I'm going to put it, I think I'm going to just keep a vignette going. I'm going to put it up a, kind of a far ways on the card, kind of up here, and possibly put my miss you like that, because I don't usually do that. So I think I'd like to try that. There we go. And now let me get my block. And I'm gonna do my miss you on Whisper White also. And I think I'm going to use my soft succulent. But I'm going to try it later also. I was, trying, I was sitting here thinking, maybe if I did Night of Navy and then used the... I wonder if it will punch with this. We should check. After I stamp it. If it would punch with this double um, oval punch, that could be really cool. All right, so let's see here. What's the miss you? Right there. And then this one, I think I'm just going to punch it on the white. Sometimes with these dark colors, our clearest kind of tones look better. I think I'm going to use the silver. I kind of like the silver. Oh, white embossing powder on navy? Yeah, it really would. So, anywho, that's that little partial idea. And then I'm going to work on coloring the very last one, which is this. Now, we don't have blends in the Blushing Bride, but I thought this was um, kind of a pretty... Um, possibility. Let me see. I may like this side. There we go. There we are. I like that better. Um, to put this on here and then take our pool party, I guess, what is this? Organza, I guess. Yeah. Ribbon and just kind of wind it across the back. Okay. Let's see if I can make this make sense or if it even looks good. We'll see. Okay. So I'm going to tape it down. Actually, it probably would be best served by putting a full strip down both sides. And then starting at the top, I was imagining putting it like that. Trim it just a little. Don't need all that excess back there. Making my card bulky. And then across here. And then this way. This way. Hold on, I gotta not let it pull. That wasn't good. Bad job, bad job. Okay, there we go. And then back this way. And now I have three strips, if that makes sense. There we go. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and stick this down. And I'll probably have to try to pull it up so that I can play with it just a little bit more because there probably is, you know, this, there'll probably be something about this that I'm like, oh, I wish I had done this, I wish I had done that. It's gonna need a little more right here. I can get that off with my adhesive eraser. Clean, 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 clean. Really annoys me don't have those anymore, but I can't live without it, so there you go. All right, so now we've got this on here. I thought I would color using the pool party. I'm going to make the pool party um, part of this. These um, that are kind of forget-me-not or they're the least daisy-ish. They're, they're rounded flowers. Those in pool party. And then there are these other flowers that look like they're they're kind of layered up here. And actually, I think I've done the opposite of what I wanted to do here. This one looks like it is several colors. But anywho. Okay, so there's that. And I wanna use, this is the Light Flirty Flamingo. I want to use it for these guys that are kind of turned up that kind of almost look like roses and I think it is the blend that is the closest to looking like blushing bride it still needs just a little bit of brown kind of in it and this is one of the distinctive stamps where it has the speckles and the dotting and whatever so that is a fun one to use when you um, Maybe you just want to color with your regular markers as well. Because it will provide its own shading when it's distinctive. Okay, so now I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna get my leaves out of the way. And I'm using the light soft sea foam. Okay, now what I wanted to do on the white, I mean on these big ones, I wanted to just leave them white. So that was kind of my idea. So I'm just coloring the centers. Being extra careful since I don't want to get it on the white. And now I have a lot of blue to color. A lot of pool party, I guess I should say. I think I want just a little bit more pink in those centers there. Oops. I have to go back in with my color lifter. I think I got a little bit there on the blue. Sometimes though, you can just take your um, color that you want it to be and go over with it and that will take care of it. So. That might be sufficient there. Now, what I'm doing is going back over the, the deep parts and just adding a little bit more blue to give it a little bit more contrast. 
little bit more pool party. Doing the same up here. Okay. So with this one, I can imagine stamping my sentiment in pool party. Oh, you like the big flowers, White Marilyn? There you can see that's how I did that. Um, so I think I'm going to go ahead and stamp my Miss You again, and this time I'm going to use Pool Party. Let me kind of stamp this off and clean it. And find my little... Well, this guy is not going to do me any good. I <laughs> left it out, and it is rock hard. It's so easy, though, once these things dry out, to just take them to your sink and... Um, rinse them and squeeze the water out and it'll be good as new. It doesn't look good as new, but it works just as good. Okay, so there's that. Let me get my pool party. And then I'm going to stamp it something like this. Oh, that's a little dark. Let me try one more time. That's okay. All right, and let's see if I can find that classic tag punch. Oh, no, it wasn't where I thought it was. I may be using the ovals again. Thought I had it on here, but it was the, here it is. It doesn't like to let me down, there it is. I miss you. And then what I was thinking about this is that we could just tuck it in on the side and make it even, just, you know, wherever. You could tuck it down here, just whatever. I just like the idea of tucking it under the ribbon, just for something different, trying to um, not do it like we always do it. I guess that's what, kind of what I'm saying. There's, there's are so many choices, but just to try and do something a little different. So, using the clear wink of Stella on the white. Oh yes, um, the clear that wink of Stella that I was using before would have made it not white. Let's see if I can, oh yeah, that's not bad. That one's almost too dry. The one I squeezed now is running silver and I don't want silver, but you're right. This will add a little bit of shine. Good idea, Char. There we go. Just got a little bit of stuff on there. I don't know what that is. Oh, it's a shard of paper. How did that get under my ribbon? Okay, there we are. So there, I don't know if you can see that, but there you go. Um, and then I think now all it really needs is some sort of an embellishment. Um, maybe the gems or, you know, because I was talking before about how the pink didn't look good on my other card. I think that the, the pink would look nice on this card. The ones that are in the, I have some issues, sorry about that, that are in the brown, let's see, polished dots. Um, one other tip I wanted to give you all is I use these to put my things in because, you know, when you get them from Stampin' Up, they have this sticky edge, and I tr used to try to fold them down like this, or or I'd just try to ignore them like I tried to do then, and it was all stuck to things, but um, when you use these that have the, um, the seal that, you know, you can tear off for your medium envelopes, um, this makes it a lot more secure. And you are very clear if you've pulled that off because you'll be able to see that it's gone. So that's one thing I like to do with a lot of these um, embellishments that come like this is just put them in something. And then that way they also, they're all the same width, even if they're not all the same width um, when you are um, buying them. So, all right, let me just add a few things here and there. So the choice here, usually, and most of the time, is whether to put them actually on the flower themselves on the, the image or to put them off to the side here. I can still tell that that is pink, so I think I'm gonna put them off to the side. Also gonna use the large ones because I kinda of like how that looks. And I'm gonna add, I think I'm gonna put some small ones. A couple of small ones, one there and then one there. So that's our, that's our last card that we made. Then going back, we have this one where I had decided to possibly 
try the Knight of Navy with it um, as the, the base for the Miss You with the embossed white, or maybe use the um, smaller part to put it on there and have it layered. And then we have this, there we go, this pale papaya card with this little snapdragon-y type thing. And then this little doily card with our, with our leaves. Now, I mean, with our wings. These wings would probably also look really great with a wink of Stella on them as well. And then I'm going to just put a little B. I'm going to stamp a B over here on the side. And then I'm going to do his wings the same way and um, put that there. And I think that will make a little, a cutesy kind of a look. I'm trying to decide how to place this ribbon, but... I do like having the ribbon on there just kind of as a contrast. So I appreciate you all watching, and I hope you have a great day tomorrow and lots of stamping time. Bye-bye!